Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alexandra Brown. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's topic because it is hot topic right now, something that's very personal to me and I'm very interested in. So I hope you find it very beneficial because I really want to dive into one of the most talked about and misunderstood areas of skincare for women in midlife, and that is the topical estrogen creams. I have been interested in topical estrogen creams for several months. I've gone to the point that I've gotten several myself. I have them sitting right in front of me. So we're going to go into like, how do they work? Um, are they good for you? What are the receptors that they work on? who they benefit and things like that. And I'm talking, I have everything from like a vaginal estrogen cream to like other creams on the market to like a compounded cream that I got from my local pharmacy. So I'm going to get into what is your dermatologist going to be potentially prescribing to you? Is that your vaginal cream? Why that is or is not a good idea? So what's really happening is that as our estrogen levels decline during perimenopause, and that can really start like mid thirties. I'm in my mid forties. So I'm really noticing it big time right now, but it could start mid thirties. So estrogen levels start declining during perimenopause and then menopause. And then your skin starts changing in ways that like not your actual retinol, vitamin C serum and sunscreen that we all talk about can really fully reverse. So many women are continuing to use their regular skincare and they're experiencing irritation. They're seeing more signs of aging and therefore they're trying to look into more of like this topical either estradiol or estriol creams, both in the estrogen category to help bring back that firmness, hydration, and that glow that they've lost with the loss of systemic estrogen. But how do these creams work? What's the difference between estradiol and estriol and are they really good for you? So I have personally been using, well, I've been using, I have the Estriol Cream from um, Alloy. I also have their Peptide Serum, and then I also have the Estriol Cream from my local pharmacy that was compounded for me. And just to appease all of you who use your vaginal cream, I went ahead and filled a prescription for myself for that to put on my face, and I have applied them all to my face. So I'm going to talk to you about how's Estriol estradiol. How is estradiol different from estriol? Which one's better for your skin? And then we're going to talk about how do they feel and things like that. So I really want to get into like what does science say about the absorption, the safety, potential side effects, who's a good candidate, who's not. And I'll be fully transparent with you here. This is not something that I learned in medical school or residency. This is something that we as dermatologists as physicians are learning in medicine today because there's a whole generation of women who needed estrogen systemically and they were denied systemic estrogen due to a study that showed potentially increased risk of breast cancer and that may be the case still with some of these creams maybe not we'll get into that a little bit so we're still learning about this and I've read several studies I've actually spent a few months reading and highlighting and I'm going to make sure I include all the studies the PubMed IDs in the cap captions if you're somebody who really likes getting to science of this and you want to like read it yourself I'm going to include several of those studies that I personally read to give you this information down in the caption below but if you just want the cliff notes then this video is for you now, if this sounds like a good topic for you, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, because this is something that I plan on talking about a little bit more and how I'm going to incorporate this into my skincare. And I'm going to be talking about my updated fall skincare routine that I have yet to film for you guys, but that's going to come shortly after this video. So make sure you subscribe so you get that notification and you get the best possible comprehensive skincare routine a recommendation from a dermatologist who is going through perimenopause. All right, now that you guys know what we're going to talk about, let's really actually get into it. First, let's talk about what's actually happening to your skin when your estrogen drops. So during perimenopause and menopause, estrogen production declines sharply. And because estrogen receptors are present throughout your skin, this hormonal shift affects nearly every layer of the skin. So what's really happening, there's like several things. First of all, you experience collagen loss. And yes, we're all losing collagen as we get older. However, up to 30% of collagen is lost in the first five years after menopause. The skin structure weakens, which leads to fine lines, sagging, and loss of firmness. Then you also notice decreased elasticity. Think of your skin as like a rubber band that gets older, loses its elasticity. So with lower elastin and glucosamine and glycans production, there's less bounce, so there's less resilience in the skin. Another thing that you may notice is the thinning of the epidermis. That's the outermost layer of the skin that becomes a little bit thinner. And when that layer becomes thinner, the skin becomes really reactive and more fragile and sensitive to the outside environment. Therefore, 
or maybe if you're using your retinol and you've used it for like decades, suddenly your skin may become sensitive to it. This is very, very common. Another thing that you may notice is things like dryness and tightness. There's decreased sebum or oil production, also less ceramides as we get older. So this combined causes that dry, flaky skin and impaired skin function. A lot of my patients also notice dullness, and this is because of the decreased cell turnover. Cells turn over at a certain rate when we're in our 20s, and as we hit our 40s and 50s, this turnover decreases, which slows the skin renewal, resulting in more an uneven tone texture. The brown spots tend to show up more. And then you may also notice things like delayed wound healing. So if you get minor cut or irritation, it can take longer for this to recover and heal, as well as increased sensitivity. So skin can sting more easily and show redness and irritation from products that were previously used and maybe you didn't have irritation with them, now suddenly you do. So in short, your skin can look less plump, less radiant, less resilient, and that's not just from like aging, some of it is, but a lot of it is from that hormonal aging and losing the hormones that our skin is used to. And this is where topical estrogen creams come in. The topical estrogen creams are designed to deliver like a bio-identical estrogen directly to the skin to help reactivate this estrogen receptor that's in the dermis and epidermis. The key benefits that I've read in several of the studies include things like increased collagen and elastin synthesis. So if you have more collagen and elastin synthesized, your skin should appear firmer and more elastic. You're going back in time a little bit. So you might also notice improved skin thickness and hydration, which can result in like a smoother, more plumper looking appearance. Um, most patients have also in the studies noticed the enhanced barrier repair and moisture retention, which will lead to like a better resilience against dryness and irritation that a lot of us are experiencing, as well as boosted hyaluronic acid levels. And that's that sponge in the skin that gives you plump appearance, more youthful, supple texture. So in essence, the estrogen creams don't just moisturize. Instead, they try to restore what's lost in this hormonal signaling that supports skin structure and hydration. So let's talk about two main differences here. Here I have your estradiol, 0.01%, which is the vaginal cream. I do have some patients that use this on their face just because their gynecologist prescribed and they have plenty of it. However, I also have the estriol 0.3% cream that is more of a design for the face, and we're gonna talk a little bit about why that is. They're both forms of estrogen, but they're gonna be very different in your potency, absorption, safety profile. And the reason for this, I briefly wanna to touch into like anatomy of estrogen receptors, because this is something that I'm sure learned about in medical school 15, to, oh gosh, probably closer to 20 years ago, but I don't remember it. So it's something that I recently read in the studies that kind of refreshed my memory. There are two types of estrogen receptors. You have alpha and beta receptors. They're predominantly identified in the skin. And histologically, their relative expression levels start to decline from perimenopause years onward as women enter an estrogen deficient state. So both estrogen receptors bind to estradiol with similar affinity. However, the expression profiles for the estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta are tissue specific. So we see more of estrogen receptor beta more widely distributed within the skin than the alpha. And of note, like a tiny little note here, the alpha receptor activation is the main driver of the reproductive cancers. So if we are trying to target a cream or if we're trying to find a cream that's gonna help with these um, aging signs that we're seeing in our skin, but we want to avoid some of those reproductive cancers and things like that, we could find a cream that selectively targets the beta receptor, but not so much the alpha receptor, okay? So we're declining in both receptors, but we want to try and target the beta, which will help with the skin, and avoid the alpha, which is where the reproductive cancers can occur from. And I'm gonna tell you, this is where the difference between estradiol and estriol comes in, and after this video, you may be like, oh, I'm only using the one, but we'll see. Now, the estrogen receptor-driven cancers may not be of concern to you, but it may be of concern to some patients who have history of, I don't know, like things like breast cancer or cervical or endometrial cancers. So this is definitely something that you should not watch this video and say, oh, well, Dr. Brown said this is safe for me. This is the information in this video should be used to take to your provider if you have history of any estrogen-driven cancer and discuss it with your provider and then decide if it's good for you. 
I digress. So let's get into the estradiol versus estriol. So estradiol, this is your typical estradiol 0.01% says vaginal cream on it. This is the strongest and most bioactive form of estrogen. This one binds powerfully to both alpha and beta estrogen receptors in the skin. So when you apply it, it is just like a shotgun approach. It goes for all the estrogen receptors. So it's highly effective at improving collagen elasticity, uh, collagen density, that dermal thickness. However, it can also be systemically absorbed, especially when applied in large amounts or on thinner skin areas. So a few studies that I was reading, you know, you guys were told to put this in our vaginal area. I've not done that yet, but, um, some patients say that this is my patients that told me they get this with like an insert so depending how high up you apply this and how much of it you apply you can potentially get systemic absorption now whether or not you're going to get systemic absorption applied to the face is very dependent on how much you're applying and things like that and exactly what part of your skin and what your absorption rate is depending on your skin thickness there's so many factors to be considered but because of this you really need to use your estradiol cream under medical supervision because this is often prescribed for that severe vaginal or vulvar atrophy, not really for cosmetic use. Another downside with this is that being that estrogen in estradiol is binding to both alpha and beta, it's stronger, so there's higher risk of melasma. Every If you suffer from melasma, you know that if you take your birth control pill or if you're on HRT, you have estrogen patch or melasma may flare. Similar applies here. If you apply estradiol cream to your face and you have significant melasma that's under not under control, there's a high chance it's gonna flare. So the estradiol cream can upregulate those melanocytes and their activity so melasma can flare. So you just wanna be really careful with estradiol as far as the absorption goes, the amount applied, the melasma, and all those things. Now let's talk about estriol. I'm gonna hold up the one that I got from my local pharmacy, uh, but you can also get estriol through other online compounds. I happen to have aloe here. This is not sponsored by aloe or any other brand. I've actually purchased several of these myself, so uh, no sponsorship. However, of note, I did work with aloe at some point. We did a podcast together, um, but they're, they don't even know I'm doing this video, so this is not sponsored, but they do have the estriol 0.3% cream so if you don't have a dermatologist and you want to get your hands on one this just happens to be one that I have tried and I've liked it now let's talk about the estriol cream now the estriol cream is typically compounded whether by a local pharmacy or by like an online ph pharmacy like alloy and it comes in 0.3 percent this is considered like a weaker more selective form of estrogen because the estriol primarily binds to the beta receptors. Remember when we talked about the alpha and the beta and the alpha is primarily the cancer driven ones and the beta is primarily in the skin. So if we find something that binds to just the beta receptors, we might have hit the jackpot. So estriol is the estrogen type of a topical cream that more selectively binds to the beta receptors compared to the alpha. So it's shown in several studies that I read, it has shown minimal to no systemic absorption, making it a much safer option for topical facial use, even for patients with history of cancers. Again, this is something to definitely talk to your oncologist about. And estriol, even though it's weaker, is still going to promote collagen production, hydration, in a little bit slower way. A lot of the studies needed 12 weeks to see significant improvement with it, but you were still getting benefit with minimal risk. In the studies that I read, this cream was very well tolerated, even on really sensitive skin. It's also less likely to trigger pigmentation changes or hormonal side effects, though everyone's very different. And if your melasma is not under control, I would proceed with caution. The estriol cream, therefore, is what's commonly used in compounded skincare for perimenopausal or postmenopausal women who want that subtle, steady improvement and have really sensitive skin. So to recap that, your estradiol or your vaginal cream is going to have stronger results, higher absorption rates also, and there's more precaution with even melasma and systemic cancers, but the estriol cream is going to be gentler, more localized benefit, lower risk of systemic effects. All right, next I want to touch on melasma here because I'm a dermatologist. I treat melasma a lot and I have some melasma patients who are on estriol creams and some who are not. And how do I determine that? And here's something to think about if you have melasma. Estrogen can trigger melasma, period. If you're on systemic form, it is very likely to. If you're in a topical form, it's a gamble on, and it really varies how controlled your melasma is 
and which type, which type of estrogen cream you're using. Estrogen can increase melanocyte stimulation, which can worse melasma or any sort of hormonal pigmentation, especially if you have a history of it and it's not controlled at the time you're using estrogen cream. So if you are mature skin and you want to try estrogen cream here's some, and you have melasma, here's some tips. Number one, don't get the estradiol, get the estriol 0.3%. Always, always, always periestrogen cream with SPF. I would look for a broad spectrum. I would make sure it's tinted. It should be SPF of at least 30, 50 is preferred, and use your tinted SPF every single morning. Make sure you have your tretinoin at least, or retinol of some sort, at least three nights a week to increase that cell turnover and to keep your melasma kind of at bay. Whenever starting your estrogen, I or starting any new cream for that matter, I would use two to three nights a week. Increase gradually to make sure that you have, don't have any sensitivity, but also to make sure that your melasma doesn't flare. And if you notice any melasma flare, even a little bit, you need to stop immediately. Now, something else to consider, if you have melasma, but most melasma is not on the neck and not around the eyes, if you want to just spot treat or target the areas where you can't use your other actives, so like under eye area can be very sensitive. You might not be able to use some exfoliating acids. You might not have the right eye cream. You Tretinoin near the eyes is very tricky. It can dry them out. It can make the skin look really dry, wrinkly, almost aging-like if it's sensitive. It, one of the options could be that you take that estriol cream and you just use it around the eyes where you're not using your other creams or where you don't have melasma. Or you can just use your estriol cream on just your neck. Just something to think about. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is how, what do I think about these? How do they feel? How do they go on? Which one am I really using? And then if you like this video, make sure you hit that follow button. Subscribe to the channel because in the next video, I'm going to do my actual routine of how do I incorporate these estrogen creams into my other already elaborate, somewhat uncertain days um, skincare routine. I have tested estradiol 0.01%, yes, the vaginal cream on my face, but I have also been using two different kinds of estriol cream, and I have the alloy, and I have my local compounding pharmacy compounded 0.3% estriol cream. And let me tell you, um, the difference in the feel is completely different. Both estriol creams, whether from Alloy or my local compounding pharmacy, I use the Black, Blacksburg Pharmacy for those who are local to here, um, they feel really nice. They feel like skincare. They go on really easy, pea size amount covers my whole face. I use another pea size for my neck. It spreads beautifully, feels very hydrating. I have used it under my tretinoin. I have used it on top of the tretinoin. I have used it on the nights without any tretinoin whatsoever. Uh, you can really pair your estriol cream with any active, um, and I would just layer them thin to thick. Estradiol cream, however, feels like, gosh, it is thick. I've applied it to my face a couple nights because I really wanted to see how it feels so I can tell you about it. I didn't love it. It comes out almost like a paste. It goes on and leaves my skin feeling somewhat tight. My skin sometimes overnight will just get oily. I'll wake up more oily or hydrated. That was not the case with estradiol. If anything, it felt very tight the next day. I did not experience any um, irritation from it. Um, it felt okay, but it definitely was not my preferred. It did not feel hydrating at all. It was a little bit harder to spread. I felt like I needed to use more of it. So my personal preference is hands down estriol, not only from like feel and how it goes on and the hydration level, personally, but also from reading the studies and safety profile. So if you're somebody who has a dermatologist or you, you want to get your hands on some of these, estriol 0.3% would be my recommendation. Keep in mind the estrogen-driven cancers and the melasma are risks. And I would, even if you're just going for estriol and you have melasma, I would still proceed with caution. I have some patients who I have prescribed estriol cream for who have melasma, but it's controlled really well. I'm one of those. And we have not experienced flares, but I did have several patients inquire about it and their melasma is actively flaring and it's not under control. And I just thought it was a really bad idea because melasma bothers them a lot. So whether or not your dermatologist and you agree on estriol cream on your face, if you have melasma, is very personal and it's going to vary from patient to patient. Both estriol and estradiol are going to help improve your skin texture, but estriol is going to be much better option in my opinion for patients looking for that 
slow, steady, localized, safe effects with minimal risks to um, cancer histories and minimal risk to melasma flares. So menopause can change your skin dramatically, but it's really not the end of its vitality. Understanding how the hormones contribute to it, how the estrogen affects your skin can help you make those informed choices, and what's the best for your skin. Make sure you explore those prescription options like estriol and work with your dermatologist and your gynecologist on what's the safest and the best option for you. If you found this helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel because I have a video coming with how I incorporate all this into my perimenopausal fall skincare routine. And make sure you find me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Alexandra Brown. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Three, two, one.